So welcome back. I know there's been recent conversations on certain forms, especially the EEV blog in regards to fake versus real GBIP adapters. So I figured I would actually show a real adapter here today. Got this in the mail today. Quite a large box for what I was expecting. Of course, this was ordered directly from Keysight, so your box may not actually say Keysight on the actual main box that it comes in. But let's take a look at the box inside. That's going to be the important part here. Well, there's no doubt we have ample packing. Much more than I even expected. This was an injected foam mold and then wrapped with plastic of some sort. It seems to be like a perfect fit for whatever's inside the box. Let's talk about this mold here real quick. This is pretty interesting. I've never seen this before. This was actually inside that box. I mean, that is amazing protection. And I'm assuming, you know, for something like this, it's, it's overkill. But I'm assuming they use the same kind of injection kind of molding for, um, for if you were to actually buy an oscilloscope from them or an actual bench multimeter or something like that. That is definitely very good protection for any sensitive type of calibrated instrument that you may order from Keysight. Now the first thing that I notice is the forgery that I ordered and even the pictures of the forgeries online. It does say Keysight or Agilent on the box, but it also has a sealed tape on the box that actually protrudes Keysight and ISO certified and everything else. Now, the label on the box here, this seems to be identical to what was on the forgery box. I'm covering up the serial number, of course, including down to the Made in Malaysia and the CMPL date, which I believe is completed date, 2015, September 19th, and the model number. That seems to be almost identical, but there's no Agilent tape on the box. So if you receive one, or you order one, thinking that you received a real one, and you have to actually take a knife and cut that tape open, because it has that Agilent name tape across it, then right there, that's a main sign that you probably received a fake one. So let's go ahead and take a closer look inside and see the difference between the packing inside versus the, the fake one that I had received recently. Well, the packing materials is definitely different. We're actually using a, a nice, thick, semi-dense foam. In fact, for this one, two pieces of semi-dense foam. Um, I've seen pictures on sales advertisements that I suspect are fake and they actually show the picture of it in a pink plastic bag like this. So that part may actually be a picture of a real adapter that somebody just happened to post on their fake sales site. And another huge clue is the software. They claim it comes with the software disk and everything needed. There's no software disk in this box. That's it. You order the adapter, you get the adapter. If you want the software, it's available for download. Now, uh, granted, I'll give it, if this was an older box from 2009, like mine was, the fake one was dated previously, then back in 2009, yeah, they probably did give you a CD with software. I don't know. I didn't order one back in 2009. We're in 2015. Um... So if there just happens to be a back lot of authentic adapters out there that have never been sold and opened from 2009, six years ago, highly doubtful, then maybe 
it would have a CD in there. But these days, everything is about the cloud. Everything is download, and I've already downloaded the software. I went to Keysight's website. I didn't even have to give it a serial number for the adapter. The software is just available to download in, in uh, well, in, the, in a demo version, I guess. And then, of course, if you want full features, you have to pay for it. No software, no tape, pink sealed bag, no, I can't say sealed, pink bag, not sealed, and I think the other bag that I received was sealed, I had to actually crack that bag open, I had to cut it open, and the adapter. So this is the 82357B Keysight. USB 2.0 GPIB interface. I don't know if this is the high speed or the standard or how I would tell what the difference is between the high speed and standard if there was a difference for that fact. Now the lab labeling on the back actually looked very authentic as well. I, I will admit that. Um, now one of the things that I actually did with the fake one is I took my finger and I rubbed it across and I can tell you right now, this feels more of a coated kind of material on this label. This doesn't feel like uh, paper that was just printed on. And in rubbing my finger across it, guess what? It didn't smear. Now let's look at some of the other things that may be authentic. This label, I believe. The install Keysight IO library software before installing the adapter number. I believe that was on there. It even had a very similar wire tie that held the USB cable together here. Not quite the same, but very similar. Of course, those could change over time. Can't tell you how many times I've had to flip over to prevent my serial number from showing up here. When I go to register this, the serial number probably hasn't already been registered from another user back in 2009. Let me take care of this problem here real quick. There we go. Besides that, the look and feel even down to the posts. I really do feel that it, it, it feels the same as the other one did. This one, oh, there's a big notice. Of course, this is Keysight. This is not the Agilent adapter. So the older adapters actually said Agilent on them. This one actually says Keysight, being a newer adapter. So one thing to keep in mind. I guess I'm talking about an authentic Keysight adapter. As far as what year they actually changed over to using the Keysight labeling versus the Agilent labeling, I don't know for sure. I would have to do some research on that. But on the Agilent one, it actually had an Agilent symbol here with little holes molded down in like the uh, depth of the uh, little symbol and little circles that went around the Agilent symbol. So. This one doesn't have it because this is actually the Keysight branded one. So I really can't compare that. Now let's look at some of the paperwork you may receive with this. A custom invoice. So no certification because, well, no calibration certificate because I don't think any kind of calibration is actually required, honestly. Now, oh, here we go. The functional test certificate. There it is. Important document, calibration certificate enclosed. This is what I was looking for. Now, I've already noticed some differences. I've already been giving an authentic certificate and I think I pointed it out even on the EEV blog but I didn't point out everything because I prefer the forgers not to fix their mistakes 
um, if at all possible. But this, the big thing being, of course, it actually lists a certificate number. It actually lists the serial number, which should match not only the box, but also the device itself. And my forgery one, the serial number on the box actually did match the device itself. That was shocking, but they failed to include a certificate number because that's a unique identifier, probably with Keysight system. They failed to actually put the serial number on there for a certificate number. I think they just listed the model number of the device. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. And of course, the same signature quality manager was on there as well. But I can tell you, I'm not going to show you the certificate. On the fake one, you ever see those bad copies from the uh, bad Xerox machines where you got the darkening grayish kind of speckle going on? That's what I had previously. This is a fresh printed page. There is no, no bad Xerox copy thing going on here. Um, I'm going to show the other side. I'm going to try not to show the other side of the certificate at that because that actually contains my serial number and of course some of the things that the foragers have gotten wrong. So I'd rather not show them. Data acquisition switch unit. South Korea Class A EMC declaration in English and in Korean. So there's three certificates you should receive with an authentic unit including if it's a recent Keysight labeled Brandit 1 it will come in an actual envelope. As a matter of fact is this some kind of a... Uh... Oh it's just some kind of label. I guess this was supposed to be originally maybe attached to the box itself or put it in the box, I'm not sure. Um, but there's three definite differences. Now I'm not going to open mine up and show the inside of it or anything. Other people already have. Should be no different from the Agilent brand authentic that other people have already shown versus the Keysight authentic branded internals should be identical. But there's your four things right up front. Your most obvious being, before you even open it, the tape across here that actually says Agilent all over it. There is no tape on the box. That's your most obvious. Your second most obvious, if it's a recent purchase, and you can tell if it'll be a recent purchase because on the actual box itself there is a date code here. For example, as I mentioned, 2015, September 19th, mine was made. This date code tells you it was made this year. It is a recent manufactured item. It should be a key site labeled. Anything in 2015, I'm for sure. I will double check the dates with key site to see when they actually changed over to using key site's name on the adapter versus Agilent. And I'll list that in the description once key site gives me a reply to that information. Um, and then, of course, with that is this additional label here, if it's a recent one. The serial number and the model number doesn't smear when you rub your hands across it. And your certificates come in this nice yellow envelope here. So, in addition, you also get some other certificates of compliances for other countries as well that may be included inside that. And what was the other main thing? Oh yes, no software, big, big thing, no software, and actual packing foam. I don't think mine had any packing foam in there. I think it was just laying in there in a bag with a software CD. So, I don't know. If you order one, before you even open it, honestly, you could probably look at it. And if the date code on it says 2009, that seems to be a common factor in the forgery units that are out there right now. If the date code on the side of the box says 2009 and it's got the Agilent ISO certified number sticker label, you know, uh, tape used on the box, 
you could probably safely just contact the seller, the vendor that gave it to you, ship it back, and get your money back right then and there before you waste your time. Because it may work for a month. I've had some people say it worked for a few months. Some people said it worked for a few weeks. Some people said there's are still working for the fake unit, but they run into problems with the Visa communication. They run into problems with compatibility of other software, open source software even, that has been made to work with an authentic adapter. And with the Forgelent one, the firmware, who knows where that firmware came from. They, they may have stole that firmware and they're not able to get the new firmware. And they really don't care to update the firmware and fix it and make it better for you. All they want to do is make a fake unit, think you have a, you know, make you think that you have a really good deal going on, make you think that you got something authentic, and uh, make quite a large profit off of it by using somebody else's name in the process. That's all they care about. Warranty, they don't care about warranty, they don't care about any of that stuff. This is an authentic, recent 2015 Keysight 82357B GPIB adapter. This is what you should expect to get if you order a recent one. Those are the key things to look out for. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and be safe.